Hello and welcome to this week's live event. Uh, my name is Ilsa Kepi and you can find my website at www.pleasureforhealth.com. Um, I'm a somatic intimacy coach and I'm here today to talk about something that comes up a lot with uh, especially women but it really could be relevant to anyone um, about empathy. People tell me, oh, I'm an empath, I'm an empath, I'm an empathic person, I have such strong feelings that, you know, I can feel everybody else's feelings and I'm, and therefore, you know, either that's really great or that's really hard. So I thought I'd talk a little bit today about, you know, empathy, how we define empathy, whether it's, you know, really a good quality or not a great quality or a bit of both. You probably, anyone who's watched my videos before probably knows we're going to go to the bit of both thing. I'm not a very black and white person in general. Uh, however, there are some real key things about empathy, I think, and some some sort of clarity we can get about that that can help us to move forward you know if we are that type of person that really is um, drawn in or feels a lot we get get a lot of feels one thing I wanted to bring up is um, you can define it you know um, how you want for you personally but I I personally find it helpful to differentiate between empathy which is often <clears throat> you know, how I, like if I'm feeling things around me or if I typically pick up the feelings of those around me or I can feel the fear in the air or, you know, at the moment you can feel, you know, um, the fear and mistrust in the world, um, then I must be very empathic. Or maybe even you can talk to trees or animals or all those types of things and you, you know, you pick up on other people's feelings or energy a lot. And it's a little bit different than, let's say, compassion, which would be an, you know, to me anyway, kind of being able to understand and uh, understand where someone's coming from and be able to walk in their shoes, perhaps in your even in your imagination, and to make choices or um, you know actions that would um, communicate or you know help embody that you have compassion for these other beings or these other groups of people or however you define that. So I take those as two slightly different things. So if you're empathic and you're feeling what's going on around you doesn't necessarily mean you're taking any action to be nurturing or compassionate or anything like that. It just means you're feeling a lot of other people around you. So I like to kind of um, not equate being empathic with being compassionate. So that's just me. And um, if I take, if we take the compassion part, kind of put it in its own place and look at empathy, it, you know, I can be empathic, I can feel what you're feeling without actually caring about you. So that's a difference too. Um, having care or love or kindness for someone is also different than just feeling what you're feeling. So again, some of these definitions can sometimes help to just clarify what we're talking about. So one thing I wanted to kind of bring up was the fact that Many of us you say we're really empathic and this is the reason why we are so easily hurt or wounded by someone else's actions or words or we're typically um, you know, in abusive relationships or we let other people walk all over us because we're empathic, we can feel for them, we know that they're really hurting and therefore um, you know, we're going to try and help them. So again, empathy gets uh, enmeshed with other things like codependency or what I was going to kind of say in a broader sense we have different parts of ourself and a lot of my work especially is on integration and what I mean by that is many different parts of ourself may have their own intentions for why we might act or say things um, or be in a particular situation so let's for example say um, you know, your partner uh, came home from work and um, had a really bad day and you had a bad day too, but you let all your stuff go and you listen and you try to be there and you, um, you know, you try to listen to your, your partner and you're, you know, you try to be empathic and, and understanding about their bad day. 
Um, and then later on, you're sort of hurt that they didn't do the same for you. So there's, you know, a lot of entanglements in that particular uh, example, but you have different parts of yourself. One part of yourself has the intention for being a caring and kind and loving partner, in which case you're going all out to show that you're caring and loving by listening to them and being there for them when they've had a hard day. Another part of you which is just as valid a part, might be uh, the, you know, uh, the victim part, the child part, the part that wants attention, the part of you that's had a bad day might also be in there. And your that part of you might be going, well, if I listen to, to them, they're going to have to listen to me. That's how you play fair. I do it for you, you do it for me. And so that part of you might have the intention of, you know, listening and being empathic to the other person in exchange, like you want something out of that exchange. So in this case, the empathy is kind of, you know, you're saying, yeah, I'm so empathic, I'm listening, I'm being so kind. But part of that is in, you know, you have another part of you that says, I want to get something. And therefore, I'm going to do this because this is how I get something. And, you know, it's manipulative. And it may be something that we learned as a young person or especially as a woman. This is how we get our needs met by trying to meet the other person's needs. And then, of course, they must know that we have needs, too, and they'd have to return the favor. So this can get really messy very quickly. So what we want to realize when we're working with ourself, which is really the only person we can work with, is that there are these different intentions. We have these different parts of ourselves all wanting different things. And, you know, those, those splinters of ourself may be acting subconsciously, like under the surface. And so, you know, we may look like we're going crazy, like we've listened to our partner, we've been all kind, and then all of a sudden we flip and we're really angry because they didn't do something for us. And that may look irrational to somebody from the outside, but really it is just two parts of ourself that are both trying to run the show. And so what I work with with people is really trying to get to know all of these parts of ourself and to honor them. So really turning that kindness and compassion and maybe empathy as well to knowing who all the, you know, where and what do all these parts of ourself feel. If we're feeling like we've had a hard day and we'd really like someone to come home and, and give us a hug and listen to all our woes, you know, that's uh, a different part of ourself. And so we need to know that that's there. And if we truly need, if that part of ourselves truly needs some nurturing, we need to, you know, learn how to ask for it and how to bring that into the mix. We can't just deny that and then get angry about stuff. So we, we have to be brutally honest. And this is something that I bring up in my programs when I work intensively with people recovering from abusive relationships that we need to be brutally honest with ourselves. Like what are we really wanting and feeling? And we may be very empathic and be able to feel what everyone else is feeling, but do you really know what you're feeling? And this can get confusing for people that are empathic because you know, you pick up on everyone else's feelings and you don't even know what's yours. And I know one of my kids in particular that, um, you know, is very empathic and picks up on other people's feelings. And sometimes she'd just burst into tears and say, you know, I don't even know why I'm crying. It's not even something I'm feeling. I just feel sad. Um, and this can get confusing then if we don't know ourselves very well and we can't say, oh, this isn't my feelings. This is just you know, a video I just watched and I felt sad or I can sense that, you know, you're feeling sad and then all of a sudden I'm crying. You know, it doesn't actually help until we are willing to make choices that can, you know, either move into that relationship or not. And so just feeling what other people are feeling around us can just get overwhelming if we don't know what to do with it. So, you know, boundaries come into there as well. Empaths, I think I've made a video before about empathic people having difficulty with boundaries and mostly the boundaries come from knowing yourself and knowing your own feelings and knowing all these parts of yourself and integrating that so that when you are meeting the world or other people's energy and feelings you know what's yours and what's theirs so this is a discernment exercise and it isn't easy to come by and there's certain 
ways of working to get to know yourself better and it takes time and practice but being empathic isn't necessarily a bad thing you know you to be able to feel things that are going on around you is probably a survival mechanism in a lot of ways we know when things feel dangerous or when things feel oh this feels like a nice loving supportive group so you know we can suss things out that way but we need to know ourselves before we can really sense where do other people where are they having an effect on me and where is me so this you know self not self uh idea comes into it which you know is interesting as i've worked in the medical uh you know body work field for a long time and we've seen a increase in um you know um diseases autoimmune diseases where we're kind of fighting ourselves i think this is kind of indicative of a similar thing like we don't know self and we don't know not self and we have trouble with boundaries and so we can end up you know fighting ourselves or having an autoimmune disease or just reacting to everything and not having that sense of wait this is mine to deal with or this is someone else's to deal with so these are skills that i work with with people uh, quite in depth in the, my somatic kind of body awareness practice. Um, so if you're interested in that, please do message me or look me up. Um, but the other thing I wanted to touch on that, that is relevant to, um, I think, empaths is that we often also say we're empathic when we're talking to people and what we're actually doing is connecting through our wounds and this is not a term you know Carolyn Mice talks a lot about woundology and things like this so the idea is that you know well I'm a victim of abuse as a kid and you know there that's part of who I am and therefore I can connect with other people that are you know victims of abuse because we have a similar thing now there's nothing wrong with having this connection, but we want to realize what that connection is. And we are connecting uh, around our wounds. So now I have a wound and you have a wound and now we connect because we understand each other. And that's all well and good if we can still keep a, uh, a schedule or, or moving forward with our healing. If we're just stuck there, oh, now I've found my people, I found my group, and I'm going to stay here. I'm going to stay in this group of wounded people that are similar to me because now I feel like I belong. Um, we're going to, you know, feel, oh, we're all, you know, empathizing together. We can all feel each other. We all, we've got this, like, I've got you, sister. And, you know, we have this whole thing going on, and then we can get stuck there. So, Having empathy for other people that have similar backgrounds to you can be a trap in a way if you don't also focus on healing and moving through that. So, you know, all of life could be like the spiritual process of letting go. It can be letting go of who we were when we were, you know, when we were really wounded with that. And now we want to be someone else we, that isn't carrying that wound around forever really healing means letting go of you know what was in the past and you know you don't go around introducing yourself oh i'm sally i'm a recovering alcoholic for the rest of your life you you know you could just be sally or you could be sally and i love sunsets you know you don't have to hold on to that forever so sometimes our empathy we confuse empathy with connection connection through our wounds and um, there's a couple of questions that are I find really interesting when looking at this. I'm just gonna this is from Carolyn Mice's book, so she's a great resource if you're interested in that. But a lot of times when we create relationships, um, we have these unspoken terms of relationship, and this is what we term: "Oh, I'm really empathic. I'm we really get each other," you know. So unconsciously, unspokenly, you may be creating this type of relationship that we will be there to support each other through any difficult things that come up. You know, you've been an addict, I've been an addict, and now we're gonna help each other. And that's the unspoken bond is that we're here to help each other through all of this. That that being supportive in that way will include reorganizing any part of our social life or work life around the needs of our wounded partner. And this is where, you know, it fits in with codependency and with all types of, um, you know, uh, connections between people that have been wounded and 
we have these unspoken things about, oh, if I'm with a partner, I have to give up everything to be there to support them. Is that really empathy? Is that really even helpful? You know, this is how a lot of, you know, people that, you know, women that I talk to especially end up staying in these types of abusive relationships because they're, they've got this unwritten law somewhere lodged in here that they need to be there. They need to give up everything that they want in order for this because this is what you do. This is how, you know, I'm so understanding and loving and kind and whatever that this is what I do. I'm going to be there for you, whatever it takes. And, you know, that's not wrong. But if we don't know who we are and we don't know what we're giving up and we just blindly walk into that relationship and stay there, we're not offering anything in return. All we're doing is being empathic and being there for the other person, but we're not even in the relationship. So how does that work? So here's another rule that we kind of unwritten in these types of things. If required, we will carry our wounded partner's responsibilities as a way of showing how sincere we are in our support. So now we start taking on their stuff. You recognize this from an empath's point of view? Now I'm taking on your stuff and now I have the weight of all your pain and sadness, all your fear and anger, all your, uh, you know, trauma. Now I'm carrying it because I'm so empathic and caring and kind and loving. And we tell ourselves that. We tell ourselves that story, that this is what you do in these types of relationships. Again, it's not that any of that is wrong. We want to be kind, sure. But you need to come from a place of your own self. You need to come from a place of having needs. You need to bring yourself to this relationship as well. And it needs to be a two-way process. So we will always encourage our partner to process his or her wounds with us and to take as much time as necessary for recovery. Hmm. Okay. Again, if we have this unspoken thing that I'm going to be there and understanding and you know, if it takes you... You know, I've been through recovery and I've gone to counseling and I've really worked on myself and perhaps you have. How long do you give your partner or your other the other people in your life that empathy, that benefit of the doubt that they're actually doing their work and what if they aren't? And how do we decide that? And again, you know, sometimes the most compassionate thing I think that we can do for someone is actually walk away and make a boundary and say, I'm not going to be here anymore until this happens or until you really prove or show or act in a different way. Um, you know, continuing to be there because you feel for them and because you understand them is, you know, really leading you down a very, very slippery slope. Um, we will accept with minimal friction all weaknesses and shortcomings rooted in your wounds since acceptance is crucial to healing. So... That's something that we've also kind of fallen into as a culture, you know, if we have a good relationship and, you know, we should accept each other the way we are and someone should unconditionally love me. Well, you know what? Yes and no. Again, you need to really question what is your motivation behind here? What is your real, true, deep self saying about that? If you need to, um, you know, accept everything about them and they're not accepting it about you, or even if you both accept it about each other, then what happens if one person decides to move forward with their healing and let go of some of their shortcomings that don't need to be accepted anymore because this person's grown spiritually or emotionally. Now this person has a lot of, uh, you know, stuff that needs acceptance and this person's moved on and actually worked on themselves. Now what? Now this person that still has to accept everything or not, how does that work? And again, you know, there's no simple answer. There's no one size fits all. I'm not going to tell you to leave or not leave or this is a good or bad relationship. It only is what it is. However, one of the greatest spiritual teachings actually I ever learned, it's a, kind of like a prayer, is, you know, um, you can say God or whatever word works for you, but grant me the discernment to know what is what is real and what is not what is true and what is not and grant me the uh, the, the ability to really see that and to accept it uh, to show me how things really are because most often we're 
uh, caught in the in the role of saying I'm an empath and I feel everything and therefore I have the right to feel sad and angry and happy and not actually do anything about it and take on everyone else's stuff and not actually make any boundaries because I'm an empath and I'm apparently you know um, so kind and compassionate that everyone should just love me the way I am and I shouldn't have to work on myself and I'm being kind of not really harsh, but, you know, trying to make a point here that that doesn't lead to happiness and peace, let's say. What it leads to is a lot of conflict, a lot of inner conflict with ourselves, because now we're feeling like, uh, I've done all this nice stuff, and you've just martyred yourself, basically, to other people and to life. And you haven't brought anything of yourself. And so I would say that, you know, in some cases, you've actually kept the best thing away from other people and in some ways that's you know the the ultimate irony you know is that you haven't actually brought yourself your love and your compassion and your kindness and your exuberance and your uh you know joy and all of the things that you are you haven't brought any of that to to uh, to anyone you've just taken on all their stuff and you've called it empathy and you've made that you've made that your mission so, you know, again, I'm being a bit brutal around empathy. It's not a bad thing. I think that empathy has its place, but it needs to be uh, worked in with the rest of the personality and with the rest of your spiritual growth. You can't just be stuck on saying, well, I'm an empath, therefore that gives me the excuses to not do my work. Nothing, you know, should get in the way of your work, whether that's a relationship built on you know, both of you being empathic to each other or or not. Sometimes the most compassionate thing I would say to do is to let yourself let go and, you know, not take on everyone's stuff. And maybe you, you might feel someone's sadness and feel with them, stand with them in that, and then be able to let it go and walk away and be doing your thing. It doesn't mean that you're unfeeling or that you're not empathic, but what are you going to do about it? What is yours to actually act on? And so, you know, when we move to what is our mission and our the reason we're here, we have to say, okay, what, what is it that I'm actually meant to act on and where can I actually take my power and my resources and my gifts and actually do something positive in the world? Or, you know, just sitting here being an emotional sponge is not necessarily going to help. If I take on all your bad feelings for years... It might help that person not have to feel their feelings, but are you really helping in the end? So it's something to question about yourself and just really check in. So, you know, the brutal honesty with yourself and knowing that if you feel conflicted, so here's a good test. If you feel in yourself that you're really empathic, but then underneath or along with that, you're like, but nobody really understands me. Nobody gets me. I don't get, nobody's kind to me. Nobody accepts me. Nobody loves me. If you have those two conflicting things, I'm so kind to everybody, but nobody thinks about me, then I definitely question what other parts of yourself are not being heard. Maybe we need to turn our empathy and our understanding and our feeling in and shine some light on our own self. So again, this is where I go with, uh, with people get really into the, the, the deep and dirty stuff that we have in here and also the beautiful stuff. So uncover the pearls and bring them to light. And that is really the transformation that we can come up with with this. So hopefully that gives, you know, at least something for you to think about. Again, if you have comments, feel free to, to uh, write to me. Uh, you can, like I said, find me on the website, www.pleasureforhealth.com. If you feel like you are you know, really inspired by this type of work and by, you know, you're ready to, to dive in and really integrate all these parts of yourself so that you can really bring yourself to the world, then I highly recommend considering booking a breakthrough call with me. It's absolutely free. It's one hour. I offer it a certain number per week. So there's only a certain, a certain number of hours that I open up for these free calls. So if you want to book one, go straight to www.ailsakepi.com forward slash apply. So that's A-I-L-S-A-K-E-P-P-I-E dot com 
forward slash apply, A-P-P-L-Y, and you'll get directly to my booking form, and I will be more than happy to get really clarity around your particular situation and how you want to move forward and really integrate parts of yourself to make a whole person that actually where empathy and compassion and kindness and love can actually flourish in a healthy way. Um, thanks for watching, Carol Ann and anyone else who's out there that's been watching, a few of you. And uh, I look forward to uh, hearing your comments and uh, talk to you next week.